We're Brittany and Drew, two hopeful adventurers who got married, moved into a van, and have been chasing adventures all around the globe ever since, and are now looking for a place to call home here in Portugal. Subscribe and join the ride. And the property hunting adventure continues. Taking you from Portugal's south coast, and by the end of the episode, winding up on Portugal's west coast. But not before exploring the Provence and Tuscany of Portugal, the historic Alentejo region, where medieval towns, castles, rolling hills, and wide open spaces abound. Along with the occasional rooftop house pets. Hey buddy. Properties in this region tend to be way more affordable. And if you remember in our last episode, there was a campground out here for sale. So I just got an email back from somebody who owns a campground. It's maybe not the area we thought we'd like, but it could be really interesting. And she just shared that it's almost 20 acres. That's a lot of land and a lot of camp spots. This could be really promising, babe. And that campground is where you'll find us waking up today. It's a great day. It is. We stayed in our little pod last night, the last couple of nights, and I gotta say, this space, the stars at night, the peace, the owl hooting, <laughs> all the things. We thought we'd stay one night, two nights, three nights. And today we have to go because we're meeting some very special friends. And if you don't know and love them yet, you're going to. But we should say a couple things about this campground because in our last episode, we were exploring the option of purchasing a ruin or rustic land. We just know apartment living and living in the middle of the city is not for us anymore. No, being in a beautiful area where we can create community for others mm -hmm. and have the ability to build unique structures which I know he's been like chomping at the bit for for a while now. You guys know, ever since we finished our van build, that's something I've wanted to do. We just couldn't find the proper land, the permitting, the zoning, all the things, the right price, which has led us to today. Because Portugal didn't offer any government assistance money during COVID, they instead deferred any outstanding loan payments until October of 2021. The amazing couple, who spent two years building this campground from scratch, unknowingly opened just two weeks before lockdown, finding themselves in an unfortunate situation. Here's the frog pond and the beautiful home oak trees with the pool in the distance. Needing to sell their very own dreamland in order to keep the dream alive, whether they were the ones running it or not. They searched for seven months to try and find the perfect land positioned somewhere that was just irresistibly amazing with sunset views and they found it. Yeah. We're gonna see where it goes. They would help us in the transition if this is the thing we move forward with. Yeah. You playing dishwasher today? I am. Look at the little kitchen. This little pot is set up pretty much just like our van. It's got a refrigerator, a stove, bed over here for two people, Shower. full toilet. There's nice hot water in here. This thing's so cool. There's even a bed here for kids and it doesn't move. <laughs> yeah. Look at the key. Looks like Gandalf, doesn't it? Although this doesn't fit very easily in your pocket. There was a lot more to learn about the loan process for purchasing a business of this scale, which may or may not make it possible for us as foreigners. And being that the campground opened at the start of COVID, we wouldn't be able to show the banks two, let alone one year of financial history. But in this moment, the joy and possibility of it all filled us with more excitement than those concerns could steal from us. Plus, there was still one place very special we had to show you. Okay, maybe two or three. I want to say too, it's been a little overwhelming for us to kind of go through this whirlwind of all these different future life possibilities and processing what it would be like to actually run a campground is a lot to take in. It's not something we've done before, although we spent a lot of time at campgrounds and we think we have a pretty good grasp on how to do it, but still, it's been a little bit overwhelming. I think we do a fantastic job. Excelentissimo. Learning Portuguese is definitely the first thing for us 
to work on. Look at this little cork grove. Portugal actually produces 50% of the world's cork. What I learned is they shave this off and they condense it down to a puree so they can reform it into products like bags or cork boards that we typically see. Look at that. Uh, Look at all of these big daddy long legs. Ugh, there's hundreds. What hundreds. is going on? <laughs> just gotta get out of the garage. Vianta, 500 metros. You know, Lucky Blue would be a lot of fun out here. Oh yeah. How do you get Lucky Blue out here? Would we bring spirit? These are the questions. That is the question. <laughs> These are the best olives for making olive oil. 300 meters to the Anta. And we're here. Look at this thing. Look at that. You can see the campground right there. Oh, cool. And this, we were told, is like 8,000 years old. Ancient, ancient, ancient. People are so proud of the Anta. It's actually the logo of the campground. And nobody happens to know how this was done. I mean... Yeah, they don't know who did it or when they did it exactly. I mean, how'd they get the rock on top? Yeah, that's pretty incredible, isn't it? The current owners of the campground tell all their guests to follow the tall eucalyptus tree out to this special spot. We were told it was planted by a local many years ago, and now it's the tallest and only eucalyptus tree around. All right, we got to make our way back to the campground so that we can have a final chat with the current owners and then we're off to go visit our very special friends. So, time to boogie. Got the car packed. Drew's just throwing away our recycling and there's just one thing left to do before we leave this magical place. The most important thing of them all. There she is in all her might. This might just be the most beautiful fig tree I've ever seen. I just want to go like lay on the trunk. <laughs> Look at this. It was made for lounging. All I need now is like a fig. Oh yeah. Mmm. More. Mm. All right, let's get one more and we'll get out of here. The best. <laughs> Which way now? This little goat path. Actually, these are the bunny paths. Those are the bunny paths? Yep, made by the bunny. Rio Tejo. This is the big hydroelectric dam to the Rio Tejo. That's the Tagus River, which is also the Tejo, which flows out to the bay at Lisbon. So it travels hundreds of kilometers from the interior all the way to the coastline. That is not so. Taking advantage of this quick pit stop to tell you about our new 2022 calendar that is now available for pre-order until November 18th. Use our code ADVENTURE10 to receive 10% off. That's only a few days away. With a few more hours to drive before we would arrive to that evening's destination, the next morning we found ourselves in our new temporary home in the countryside, eager to find out where our new day's adventure would take us. Good morning. We're waking up in a yurt today. This is actually a Mongolian yurt, and we had a beautiful sleep in here. It was so relaxing. This yurt's actually a lot bigger than I would have ever imagined. We had a great time with B and Theo last night, and today we're gonna be going on a hike with them to a new place. But first I gotta show you the view. Good morning. Hi. <laughs> Having a good session? Yes, yeah, fun is amazing. And meet Trixie. Hey little pup. This is the outdoor kitchen of our place. We did get some large farm eggs this morning. And of course we got Trixie down here. So cute. Looking for scraps. You make a good wish? Feels like it's my birthday. It is gonna be a good day. We got hold of the Dreamcatcher yurt book that all the guests have signed. Whoa, look at that one. Oh, that's stunning. Beautiful watercolor. 
Oh, those are nice. So special. Do you bring your watercolors? No, but you're definitely going to have to write something special here because Simon and his wife Pam built this with their own two hands. Wow. These yurts are from Mongolia and unfortunately two weeks ago Pam passed away. We are one of his very last guests here which feels like we can comfort him and maybe bring him a little bit of joy during this sad time. I think so. I'm just glad he's got little Trixie here to keep him company. She's full of all sorts of tricks, isn't she? Trixie. She's chasing the flies right now. So why you love living in Portugal so much? I just feel it's a country that offers you most things. It has lovely people. Yeah. I think the areas, the food, I think people treat you nicely if you treat them nice. When you don't speak the language, as long as you try, they everybody is very helpful and it is a great it's just a great place to live. It's fresh air open spaces mm -hmm. generally it's just a lovely country i've lived here just under five years now wow. got a lot of good friends found the portuguese are very helpful when it comes to building or you want to do something they are very very obliging to help and anyone who's thinking about living or settling down yeah why not come to portugal Aww. because it is a fantastic place to live yeah and we know you're it selling really this place this place but is up for sale now unfortunately yeah. because we've had a sudden passing of my partner yeah. but um we're still going to stay in the village. We still want to stay with all our friends. So you're not leaving Portugal? No, I'm not leaving Portugal. For me, I'll see the last of my few days out here. Uh, it's a fantastic place to live. And it's just the Portuguese. Yeah. They are just a wonderful race of people. Uh -huh. They really are. I can't really say a lot more because what do you say about a good place to live? Simon is confirming why we would want to live here Maybe in Portugal. Maybe we will be neighbors. Yeah. You never know, darling. <laughs> you never know. For anybody else thinking about it, just we'll put his contact information below. Getting all packed up. Packing up the bags, finishing charging. Good thing we got the Jackery here. We got everything plugged in, making sure that our computers and our camera batteries are going to be all topped up. You guys know this thing. You know how much we love our solar powered generator. It's the Jackery 240, 240 watts of pure power. We don't only love having our Jackery when we're in the van, but when we're traveling and we're out and about living in yurts that are off grid, having the Jackery is the best solution for being able to stay powered up and connected no matter where we are. I really like it for us traveling in the little car and any time that we don't want to just run the car and keep it on, we just plug and play into the Jackery and it's good to go. I love that as multiple chargers for USB connections, cigarette lighter connection, and household plugs. It's even got a plug for our European friends. And that's solar charged portable power. Even if you don't have the solar panels, you can just plug in the Jackery to recharge it back up so that you can juice whatever it is that needs power. So check out our link below and see what Jackery product can help power up your life. So where are we going next? This isn't very normal of us to not know where we're gonna go in the morning. And it's like one in the afternoon and we don't know where we're sleeping at night. Sounds like van life. I know, we're just used to not needing to figure this out. It's a, it's a little bit hard. Simon's been so kind here, so we just been chatting away with him. Yeah, he's let us have a late checkout. I think that's part of the thing here in Portugal. We talk to everybody to understand how they feel, how Portugal's been to them, and some of the inside tips and advice they can give us for newbies being in this country. And the more we hear and the more people we speak with, the more confident we feel in our gut feeling of living here. Yeah, it feels it's, good. Yeah, it's very confirming. So, okay. All right, things to do. <laughs> Places to go somewhere. So we've made it to our friend's beautiful land and we just want to give you a little look around. Here's their adorable little A-frame chicken coop covered trailer living situation, which is the perfect kind of housing when you're in the middle of constructing and building and fixing a ruin like they are. If you guys haven't guessed yet, we are visiting with indie projects, B and Theo. They are expats who moved from England. Can you see the sunshine? <laughs> Look at how gorgeous. We're surrounded by pine trees and eucalyptus and this is the ruin that they have been pouring their time and energy and heart and soul and sweat into. My sweetness. You guys know I love my kitties. 
You made it upstairs. Yeah. They gave you a boost and look, you Many of you might already know that this is B and Theo of Hello. Indie Project. Hello. How you doing? Last time we saw them was in England back in 2018, I think. I think it was 2017. 2017. Yeah. Well, you give us hope that moving to Portugal makes a lot of things possible, you know? Definitely, definitely. 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 What would you say are your three favorite things about living in Portugal? Oh, number one is the weather. Oh, yeah. Yeah, in England. I believe that, yeah. The laid back, friendly, mm. kind, caring, just yes. chill people. Yeah. Mm. Like the, the whole kind of energy and vibe is just yeah. relaxed it's and just really it really is i think nature the nature is really good here like there's there's you just see beautiful animals here in the summer yes. and the winter different ones coming over from africa the birds and stuff yes. in the summer it's stunning yeah it's all fun. sorts of things wild boar and, yeah. yeah do you have any advice for us the language is tough to learn but it's ideal to learn it yeah that's <laughs> what i kind of thought it does make a difference especially if like if you're doing a project that makes it easier talking in the building yards and stuff oh, and, gosh, yeah. and being able to communicate that way. Yeah, all of my Portuguese is literally just how to order building materials at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> I'm slowly getting better at the other stuff. But I know that I can come over here and talk to Theo and he'll give me all the insight on getting bolts and nuts. Yes. Just make some, 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 yeah. Yeah. some of you have asked why would we want to move to Portugal out of all of the amazing places that we've been and you heard it from being Theo themselves amongst so many other reasons. We love this country so much. I gotta show you guys this. This right here is the wood burning part that heats the bathtub. Could you imagine? I've literally been in there for three hours before. It's just a dream. Oh, we oh. might have to think about one of these. We'll You're, have to get the uh, plan for this. You're really making me want to stay in one spot, my friend. <laughs> and not move around at all. You're selling Portugal pretty well. Link for sunset perus. So yeah, they would have been hanging on the well and it goes Scooping around in a water. circle as the donkey walks around the well puts it into this oh whoa <laughs> that then filters the water down and into this tub i love that you've painted it blue <laughs> yeah. that's what i said too <laughs> it's Beautiful quite spot. it's quite jarring at first but <laughs> yeah. it's great right under the fig tree <laughs> yeah exactly you can sit in there in the summer pick figs off the tree yeah. while you're bathing oh, that's <laughs> our community dream. knows how much we love figs <laughs> there's oh, some in the glove compartment of the car because oh. i didn't know anywhere else to put them Theo brought us to this really amazing town nearby called Monsanto, and you should see this place. Whoa. In 1938, the village of Monsanto was dubbed the most Portuguese town in Portugal. Yet, at first glance, Monsanto certainly does not seem representative of the entire country. For one thing, most Portuguese houses are not sandwiched between gigantic boulders. Some actually fitted with doors leading to homes carved right into the rocky landscape. Can't say I'd mind doing laundry here. How about you? Thumbs up for that view. Just amazing. Amazing these buildings built within these huge boulders on this huge mound. Do you want me for scale? Oh my goodness. He just wants to show how much taller he is. Stand on my tippy toe. That is pretty impressive. But it's tiny cobblestone streets with each stone hand laid, winding up the landscape at a steep grade past red roof cottages and the happiest of chicken coops. Hi ladies. Reflecting the classic Portuguese village style in the most picturesque way. But it was truly the unorthodox boulder oh, sheep that captivated us. Oh, it's so cute. Too bad there's not little piggies in there anymore. Tiny little door. <laughs> the most scenic pig pens in the world. <laughs> Push harder. <laughs> So from the top of here, you can see right over to Spain one side and Portugal's on the other. We're only like 10 miles from Spain right now. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Monsanto's Spain's really right close, close to, to Spain. Held in high esteem as a living museum, Monsanto is crowned by the remains of a Templar castle. It hangs off a stunning mountain top overlooking the Portuguese countryside, with views of Portugal and Spain for miles. A perfect place to make some beautiful memories with our friends.
Does this give you a deeper appreciation for the work you've been doing? A hundred percent, hundred percent. With full hearts and the setting sun, it was time for us to boogie on to our next destination. Found on Portugal's rugged west coast, Peniche. We both knew that we needed to get to the edge, get to the seaside, and let that fresh ocean breeze clear our minds so that we can truly wrap our minds around that campground. Because after spending time with our friends, Portugal is really starting to feel like home already. And we're both really wanting to find our place here, I guess. <laughs> I found my place. <laughs> yes, you did. I was so exhausted. We slept a solid nine hours last night. But now you got to get up. It's time to hop on our bikes and go to our very favorite van life spot. Yeah, I got to say, not having a van, our turtle shell, with all of our items in it, and having to repack and bring in bags and move the car. I think we're on like our 14th place we've stayed at since we've been in Europe this time. It's just a lot. It is really exhausting in a totally different way. Makes me appreciate van life that much more. Like the suitcase that you can live in that has a kitchen. Feels good to have wheels back under us. Yeah, it's the first time on bikes in months. <sighs> Nothing better than being on our own two wheels, cruising the countryside, looking off at these cliffs. <laughs> it's still as beautiful as I remember it to be. That's where we parked the Howler on my 30th birthday and Drew filled the entire van with 30 balloons. 30 balloons, very <laughs> special for my special lady. It was unforgettable and it feels extremely surreal to be back here. I'm really curious what my wishes were for my 30th birthday because, I don't know, I feel like they're coming true now. <laughs> it's a great place to be again and just reminisce about all those times and kind of onto our next chapter. It is. and. Here in Portugal, they've actually clamped down a lot on the wild camping rules. Yeah. And so the thought of owning a campground makes even more sense in this time in the world. This era. Yeah. So I think we just need to let the fresh ocean breeze clear our minds. There's a lot of amazing things ahead. So if you haven't done so yet, please subscribe and tap that like button. We need more of you amazing, beautiful people to share this journey with. You guys make it that much more fun and fulfilling for us, so. And we hope we're giving you guys some information that helps you be more adventurous in your own lives, more creative, and getting out there and just doing fun things that you're interested in. Yeah, you can choose to go your own way in life, and we hope that our journey just helps inspire you and shows you that you can too, so. Make it happen. Go out there and have a great day. Until next time. See you then. We love you guys. We'll see you guys back here soon. You're the best.